Um, um, fast forwarding a bit, I know you uh, played with Thad Jones and Mel Lewis, and I know Thad was a big influence on you as a writer and um, I'm, I would imagine as a band leader. Um, can you share some of your feelings about Thad and, and that experience? Yeah. Um, gosh, uh, Thad was such a dynamic band leader. You know, he, uh, it was such an inspiring experience to sit in the band with him conducting and he just had some very unusual way of drawing the best out of the musicians in the band and making this music have a shape and sound that was just unparalleled and of course his writing was wonderful kind of the next the next step after Duke Ellington and uh, very contemporary in many ways, but also swinging and, you know, really lush and fat and funky. And uh, it was just a great experience. Mm. I, I love playing in that band. It seemed like harmonically you drew from him a bit I in did. terms of uh, I did. taking that those kind of harmonies to the big band. Mm -hmm. I did. I did. Absolutely. You know, I, I took from every band I ever played in. I stole everything I possibly <laughs> could. And, and not consciously always. I mean, just through osmosis, you know, I mean, just listening and paying attention, I, I, you know, and it was odd with Thad because when I started writing, uh, you know, I, I realized, man, my writing sounds like Thad's in many ways, but it, it wasn't, I hadn't looked at his scores or anything, it just, mm. I had picked up things and picked up shapes and, and sounds and kind of, uh, you know, just, you know, probably overly borrowed initially, I mean, I think at this point I've, since moved on, but uh, yeah, of course. absolutely, Thad, you know, had a huge impact mm -hmm. on my big band writing, mm. for sure. You know, we were talking about your charts with Buddy's band, and, and all of us, when I was on the band in 83 and 84, we, we always used to check the Village Voice whenever we'd be off, get back to town, and we were hoping that Bob Mincer's big band was playing down at 7th Avenue South, the club that Michael and Randy mm -hmm. Brecker owned. And we were very fortunate to hear you a number of times, and it was so inspiring. And uh, and I just love to hear what you have to say about the band. About I mean, that band was the personnel was unbelievable. David Sambor, Michael, and Randy, and Don Grolnick, and Will Lee, obviously yourself, and and uh, Peter Erskine, Keith O'Quinn, all these amazing players. Um, yeah, what was your feeling? You know, starting the band is such a huge undertaking, and then the way the music was received and. And, um, and putting together that roster of players. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Well, uh, uh, initially, um, it, there was a manager at 7th Avenue South who had called me and asked if I would put a big band together just for a, a gathering of sorts, some mm. sort of party down there. And I, 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 I wasn't sure what I thought about that. I mean, I think at that point in time, I played with Buddy and Louis Belson and Thad and Mel and, it, and Mel, and it was time to move on and do some small group playing. Um, and so I thought, eh, you know, let me just as a, as a goof call all these, you know, hotshot players in New York, and I, I knew a lot of great players, and uh, called all these people, and lo and behold, when they heard who all was going to be there, they thought, man, I, I want to do this. Uh, this sounds like uh, an interesting experience. And um, so, so I wrote a couple of charts. I g gathered together a couple of things I had done for Buddy's band, and we went in and played a weekend. And of course, when you put all those names in the paper on, in one band, people come, and there mm -hmm. were lines outside the club, and uh, you know it was like, Bob, who? <laughs> you know, it was like, man, Dave Sanborn, Mike, and Randy Becker, you know. Uh, so uh, it was it was a very interesting um, you know introduction to. To this whole big band thing for me and uh, of course it, it you know it's sort of you don't really know what's going to come along musically in your career I mean while I was trying to do the small group thing in the meantime this big band sort of like fell out of the sky <laughs> and crashed down right in front of me I was like okay well here it is seems to be and you know legs sprouted out and started running <laughs> so I jumped on basically and uh, that's, you know, I mean, it's, I can't believe it's like 30 years later and I'm still at it, you know, I mean, it's, and it's actually, it's a wonderful vehicle f from a composition arranging standpoint and a playing standpoint to create this terrain in which to navigate as a player and to write for other players. It's just, it's been a real adventure, real, mm. you know, real gratifying thing. Um, we mentioned Michael Brecker. Um, could you share some of your thoughts about Michael and your relationship with him and, uh, and what he meant to yeah. you? Yeah. 
Uh, I met Mike Brecker in 1973, I think. And uh, I, was, uh, I lived on 21st Street in New York City, and right up the block there was a, a drummer named Bob Jospe and a, drum, a trumpeter named John Durth, and they had a loft. And, and I, was, I, I was over there frequently, hanging out and playing. And, and Mike came in. He had done a gig, and he just got back to town. He came right from the airport. He wanted to play a little bit. So he took out his horn, and he, you know, he played uh, with just drums and saxophone. And I had never really heard anything quite that dynamic up close. And I, you know, my jaw hit the floor. You know, <laughs> I was like, "My goodness!" You know, and 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 what really struck me was he was so sort of self-deprecating. You know, he'd like play this amazing, seemingly effortless thing, and he'd like go, you know, like that. And I'd be like, <laughs> "You gotta be kidding me!" You know, I mean, I never heard any saxophone playing like that. Anyway, uh, we 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 made acquaintance at that point, and. Subsequently, wound up working together a little bit and became friends, and you know, did some hanging out and playing, sharing notes together. Um, it's just an incredibly was an incredibly natural musician, very hardworking, um, incredibly innovative. I mean, obviously, uh, both as a player and a composer and a mm -hmm. sort of musical visionary, and uh, somebody who always inspired me. Both his musicianship, his work ethic and the kind of person he was, which was just a very gracious, giving, uh, you know, selfless person. Hmm. Um, during the 1980s, you also toured and recorded quite a bit with Jaco Pastorius, and uh, um, a lot of those recordings have become classics now. I know my young son, who's uh, uh, wanted to turn me on to Bob Minster's bass mm -hmm. clarinet playing, I said, well, I've already got it, but, uh, but it's, it's great that, that uh, those recordings are living on in, in such a meaningful way to, to young people now. Um, what was the experience like working with Jocko? Oh, it was, as you probably expect, it was uh, interesting and inspiring. Um, all these great musicians in the band, and you know, Jocko also was a visionary. You know, somebody who had this amazing ability to arrange the notes in a very special way, and also, you know, when you played in a band with him. It was very wide open. There, was, there wasn't a guitar or piano player in the band, hence there was a sort of open terrain as far as improvising and even making up little parts and you know, um, being, being kind of an arranger while you were being a player mm -hmm. at the same time. Mm -hmm. And there, you know, it was very inspiring. And also a little troubling, you know, he had his problems, and, but uh, the music was on a very high level and always very inspired. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, I consider you equally brilliant, both as a writer and as a player, and I think it's a, it's a rare combination. But uh, um, if you were to list some of your influences, both from the compositional standpoint and as a saxophonist, who, who might those folks be? You know, uh, compositionally, uh, I, I'm fairly open-minded. I mean, I, I've listened to all sorts of classical music from medieval music, which actually had a, had a large impact on my writing and musical thinking. I, when I was in college, I played in a medieval music group. Um, you know, uh, Baroque music, Telemann, um, uh, uh, Beethoven, Mozart, I'm, uh, geez, uh, you know, Ravel, Debussy, um, Mahler, I mean, you know, just any, any and all uh, 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 20th century composers. I mean, Igor Stravinsky, I think, was probably one of my all-time favorites. Just a certain soulfulness and beautiful way of, of voicing instruments that really had an impact on my writing. Uh, uh, Bartok, uh, mm -hmm. Alban Berg. Arnold Schoenberg, whose house we live in. That's what I understand. That's amazing. <laughs> yeah, he's rolling over in his grave right about now. But uh, I don't know. But it's that. an interesting house, and I, you know, some just his his early music and later music, both you know, were very fascinating to me. Um, but you know, uh, all all the jazz greats from Miles to Monk to Dizzy to Coltrane to Charlie Parker to. Sonny Rollins, mm -hmm. Sonny Stitt, Dexter Gordon, Stan Getz, uh, you know, Duke Ellington, all the great Count Basie bands, uh, Thad, Gil Evans, uh, George Russell. I've been sort of revisiting some of George Russell's 
uh, music. Brilliant, brilliant composer. Uh, I don't, you know, I, I'm wide open. I'm trying to take in as much as I possibly can. I, 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 I love all kinds of music, and I, I feel like it informs what I do in, in a very profound way, you know. Mm -hmm. And there's no reason to limit oneself to, you know, what, what you listen to. I mean, African music, been to Africa many times and learned things there. Brazilian music, um, uh, you know, folk musics from different parts of the world. Uh, been to Hungary and Bulgaria and places like that, you know, really interesting music there. What a great lesson, though, for all musicians developing, even somebody at your level, you're still approaching it that open way and, and taking everything in. And I think that's, we all need to do that because that's, that's, that's what yeah. it's about. That's amazing That's the beauty. Approach. That's yeah. the beauty of what we do. It never ends. I mean, I feel like I'm scratching the surface, really. There's just wow. so much more to do, so much more to learn and hear and experience. That's great. That's an inspiring uh, approach.